<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this hopefully quick video here, I'll hope that I can show you all if you have a Corona 4 gigabyte model Xbox 360 and you're attempting to dump the NAND from it for a RGH and you're using Pico Flasher, how you could hopefully get past the air of the console not being found. You see, Pico Flasher, in my opinion, is a pretty good option for anybody who's wanting to program the NAND on their Xbox 360, and this might be all they can really find or what is within their budget, because for a $4 Raspberry Pi Pico and a free firmware, you can turn this into a pretty good NAND flasher. Now it does have Corona 4 gigabyte support, however, it has been reported to be spotty. And it seems to be from what I've been told and some observations that it depends on the type of eMMC chip the console has. Now I only have one Corona 4 gigabyte model on hand, and unfortunately, this one is one of those plagued ones which does not work with Pico Flasher. Until, well, I was able to get it working with a big help and thank you going out to Balika011, where at one point I was contacting him about it and we ended up going through some troubleshooting steps and after a bit we were able to get my console detected and working with Pico Flasher and the NAND dumping within JRunner. So I will say here it will be a little bit more difficult, however there's not too much extra that goes into this. You will need a couple things. On top of everything you're already using for your RGH process, you will need in order for this to possibly work, and I'll come back to that, a a 10,000 ohm resistor, as well as a little strand of wire. Now, yes, I know if you're doing RGH3 on your Corona, you probably have a 1,000 ohm resistor. For this, you're going to need a 10,000 ohm resistor for it to work. And I do want to give a disclaimer that so far, this was really just tested on my own system here, where Balika was kind of helping me remotely, and I was able to get it working on my system. So what I'm saying here is, your mileage may vary, but a big thank you and shout out to him, and I did want to make this video to hopefully get the information out there, and maybe this can help out some other stubborn consoles if your only option is Pico Flasher. So you can see here, I have my Raspberry Pi Pico with Pico Flasher installed in the system already. I do just have the wires for the Corona 4GB model because this is a Corona 4GB model. And if we try to hook it up to the computer through JRunner, this is what will happen. This here might be what you've run into before, where if you have everything hooked up, Pico Flasher is showing, and you go to console type and click on the question mark, you get a flash config 0x all Fs console not found. And as many times as you do it, it's still going to get that. You can try and read the NAND, but as you can see, console not found, we can't get anywhere, even if the Pico Flasher is wired up properly. Now do keep in mind, before you attempt this on your system and you're getting this error here, I'm just going to be blunt, this is not going to solve any issues with poor soldering, poor soldering techniques, or other soldering issues. So I know at least for my system here, I do trust the soldering, however, if you are soldering with shorts, you're not making proper connectivity, or there's other issues here, this is not going to fix any of that. This here will really only work if your soldering is good and sound and trusted and you just have a console which is a little stubborn due to the eMMC. So ripping into this right here, I'm going to show you all how you can get this all wired in. Now do keep in mind here, this isn't going to be the prettiest looking solder job and that's mainly because this here is going to be temporary, but as long as it works, that's what we need. Now in order to give myself a little more working room, I'm just going to remove these two wires right here because we are going to have to get in here at this point. Once these two wires are removed, Removed. You might have to remove all the wires here if it's easier for you, but either way, we do have to get this wired up, but with the resistor and the extra wire on hand. So for our resistor, we have to come over to the U1-D1 section, which is going to be familiar for anybody who's worked on a Corona 4GB model. And you're going to have to solder this resistor from pad 2 to pad 5. Pad 2 is going to be blue according to this diagram, or it's going to be the one that is wired up to GP8 on your Raspberry Pi Pico. So you might have to play around with this a little bit, whether you want to twist your wire with the resistor, or you can get your resistor soldered in first, then the wire, or vice versa. However, you are going to have to solder both the resistor and the wire for GP8 onto this same pad. Thank you. 
Once that's been completed, do keep this in mind. Resistor legs are going to be hard and these pads are pretty sensitive and brittle. So you're going to want to be careful here if you're doing what I'm doing, which is bending this to shape a little bit, just because I don't want this shorting out any other pads, any other points, or any other wires and really causing issues. However, once you get it bent to shape, you can bring the other end of that resistor over to pad five over here, which should not be populated. Just go ahead, come over here and wire up this resistor. There are going to be some components on the board here which you will have to be careful with, so what I recommend doing is get the wire soldered in and then carefully, just very carefully, kind of bend it away from those other components. So that's one half of the fix. Next up, we're going to be soldering in a wire. Now this can be any wire that's going to work for this. I'm here using 30 gauge solid core wire. It could be wrapping wire, Kynar wire, but something like this is going to make it a lot easier. And we're going to have to do the same thing right here. And you are going to need to solder your wire to ground as well. So you're going to want to do the same thing here. Again, the same thing as before, if you want to twist the two wires and solder them onto the pad together, or if you want to solder the ground wire and then the jumper wire second, it's going to be up to you as long as you get them both connected. Again, this isn't my best work, but this is all temporary here just to get this kind of bodged and working. Now once you have that jumper wire wired up to ground, we need to connect it to another point. So you're going to have to come up here where your extra lone wire is for the Raspberry Pi Pico, and you're going to come over to this header, which is going to be J2C3. You're going to look for pin 5, which you should already have a wire soldered up to, and we're just going to solder in the other end of this wire over to pin 5 right here. And just like before, essentially what I did was just desoldered the already existing wire there, prepared the point properly properly, and then I was able to get both wires soldered in. And as you can see, it's not the prettiest setup, it is a little bit crowded, however, this can hopefully get you where you need to go. So at this point now, with that jumper wire and that resistor in place, go ahead and finish rewiring your Raspberry Pi Pico, getting it wired up for a Corona 4GB model. Now I was able to get the last wires tacked in here, and once everything was soldered in, I turned off my soldering iron and then brought my console over to my PC. Now with the fix in place, I'm going to go to console type, hit the question mark, and as you can see, it was able to find my Corona 4GB with the eMMC connected. I can try this several times, and as you can see, it's able to bring this up, while as just a little bit ago, it could not find the console. At this point, do two NAND reads, click on read NAND, and one thing I've noticed is that this seems to be a little picky. So what I would recommend if you're using this here, click on read NAND and then immediately take your hands off of the keyboard and mouse. Just let it do its thing and let it get two good NAND reads. So as you can see, we did one NAND dump successfully. We got a second one almost done. It did a comparison and the NANDs are the same. So that is awesome to see here overall. Now what you wanna do here is if you're doing a RGH3, for example, you might be following my RGH3 tutorial you can just continue on with the rest of the video, in which you need to select your glitch, which for RGH3 it would be glitch2 RGH3 on the latest kernel, create Zell, write Zell, boot up your system to make sure you get your CPU key, punch it in here, then create XE build, and right NAND back to the system. Do keep in mind here, at these steps where you are trying to boot up and test your system with Zell and with a modified NAND, in case your system does not turn on, you might just have to temporarily undo the fix. So you can really just disconnect the resistor from one of the points and that jumper wire from one of the points and just keep those secure. But as you can see, that's all there is to it. Is it the prettiest fix? Not so much. But does it work? Well, at least for my console, it did. So that's why I'm sharing this with you all. And if you all have gotten stuck stuck at this point, but this worked for you, please let me know because I would be interested in seeing other systems that might be out there. I myself only have one system to test it on, which is a problematic one, and I know when I talked to Balika about this, he only had two Corona 4GB systems and both of them worked fine, so he couldn't accurately test. But either way, I did want to give a big shout out and thank you to Balika for helping me out with this before and being cool with showing this method to you all, so hopefully it can help you all out. If it helped out or if you found it interesting, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.